So that brings us to the broad topics for the month, the month that is NWA TNA in December 2003. We will start with, not the world title scene, let's start with Raven and the Gathering. Yeah, um, the most fun part of these shows. Yeah. Which is like, I feel like we've been saying Raven, the most fun part of these shows for the last like eight months. Yeah, because consistently Raven is always siloed off at his own little story. Fair enough, this month he's he's reorbiting back into the Jarrett world because they're building back to that again. But Raven is always just off doing his own thing, having good matches on good shows and telling decent... Like, th- he's working with the red shirts this month, so it's not great. But it's better than nothing. Hmm. So, NWA TNA pay-per-view number 73, December 3rd, 2003, Raven and Gathering face Abyss and the Red Shirts. They have a backstage promo before that where Raven insists once again that despite the, the, the pain he wants to inflict on Abyss and the Red Shirts, this Gathering reunion is only for one night, Liam. My favorite thing about this was them selling throughout the show that, wow, the Gathering, back together. I'm like, it was like four weeks ago <laughs> that, that they were like last teamed. This isn't... Like, they're trying to sell it like some big deal as, like, Raven and the Gathering back together. It's like, I think he only declared his independence from the Gathering, like, a month ago. Yeah, it was after the hair versus hair match, where it's just like, guys, we, we did it, you're free, go do what you want. And then they spent the entire month pestering him. So it wasn't even like they were away from Raven. It wasn't like yeah. they were deprived of Raven. They were with Raven in every segment. At least if they had, a, like, done their own thing for the month and, like, had, like, a mini tag feud with someone, we could be like, ah, oh, he's called back his old friends, blah, blah, blah. They can still have them pine for Raven the whole time, but keep them separate so them coming back together is actually a selling point. Hmm, as opposed to just the thing you're doing because you decided to do it because it builds to a story. I'll just say thing that you're telling us is a thing. Hmm. The classic pro wrestling story of tell us the story you think you told instead of Terry t- telling us the story you actually told. Hmm. So then Abyss and the Red Shirts defeated Raven and the Gathering in a six-man tag team match after Abyss spears a chair into Raven. This was a that was a weird spot. Yeah. I had to watch it back a couple times to like, what actually happened? It feels like a spot that should hurt Abyss just as much as it hurts Raven. Well, it probably does, but it doesn't care. He's a monster. Yeah. I love Raven. The entire month, like, he, he clearly came up with a thing he thought was a very good line, which was like, <laughs> nothing escapes a black hole, but you hit me with the black hole stab and I'm still standing. And he says that like four times this month. He's like, oh, it's a good line. I've got to get it in. <laughs> it's not that great of a line. No. Abyss and the Red Shirts go back and forth with the Gathering a couple of times trying to take out Raven, but the Gathering eventually run them off. Sweet. It was a fun little match. There's a lot of weird little segments like that this month where it's like, it's not a clean Gathering attack and save, you know? It's more like Abyss tries to take out one, but then someone else comes in, but then they're taken out, but someone else comes in, and then it looks like they're going to beat them down, but they make their own comeback. And it's like, okay, what was... I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I didn't... I don't mind the, the Red Shirts like, all right, we're just going to beat up people until... We know what side you're on. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's a fun little uh, little thing. So based on Abyss pinning Raven in this match, that brings us to NWA TNA preview number 74, December 10th, 2003, in which that match was Raven versus Abyss in a rivalry that we'll see blossom for a few years, including a world title match in 2005. But here is their first match right here. I'm, I'm more looking forward to the uh, these later matches. Kind of disappointed by this one, but I was also like, I know that we're going to get probably better ones at some point. Yeah, it had a DQ finish. And this is a, a reoccurring theme in this month and the previous month of DNA in particular, where it's like, what causes a, an actual DQ is very confusing. Because, like, there's a spot where uh, somebody goes through a table, there's a bunch of interference already, then the red shirts get into the ring, which is like the third or fourth instance of interference in this match. Raven hits them, and with like uh, he fends them off. They don't even attack Raven, but Rudy calls for the DQ anyway. It's like... There's mm. outside interference in this match. There's spears through tables, which the table exploded in a very satisfying fashion, by the way. Yeah, that was a good table bump. Just boom, table go pow. And like this match was built around Abyss doing bear hugs for some reason. He's a bear hug guy now. Yeah, I like the bear hug. He's just hugging Raven. Who doesn't want to give Raven just a nice hug? Who doesn't want to give Abyss a nice hug? Yeah, it's very strange. But yeah, this this entire match was just a DQ for some reason. I don't know. It's just, it makes no sense. And this this is, is a company-wide problem at the moment where it's like, I don't mind if you want to be the company that's like, we don't do rules that much. We don't do DQs. We just let people do brawls. I'm okay with that. It's like my um my theory about like spooky shit in wrestling. Mm. I don't mind it if it exists within the established canon of the company. Yeah. If, you're, if you have a company where you acknowledge that spooky shit exists, I'm fine with it. If you have a company where you're like, DQs are lenient and it's been that way, I don't mind it. 
But when you decide to suddenly incorporate this element into that universe without having any sort of explanation, that's when I find it, that's when that disconnect comes out and becomes noticeable. Yeah, because when it's, you know, they do a, a table bump, they do interference, and then suddenly it's it's a DQ because they get in the ring. And again, they don't even beat up Raven. Raven fights them off as Rudy yeah. calls for the DQ, which is, again, against, like, the general rule of wrestling, where it's like, if the babyface fights off the interference, it's not a DQ, is the general rule. It's only when they attack somebody that's an actual DQ. But... What what's the rule in this company? There is none. You can put somebody through a table, but you can't fight somebody running in the ring. I don't know. It's weird. I feel like they should have just made the chair shot the DQ. Oh god, yeah. Gathering in the red shirts brawl for a while, and the end of this segment is Raven hits Abyss in the face with a steel chair, not in the head, in the face. I hope the mask took most of it. <laughs> it's just a just a. Wild looking chair shot. Do you think a mask can absorb a chair shot? I don't know. What's the mask made of? Is it some kind of like, what's the thing that Black Panther wears that absorbs the energy and then puts it out? Uh, I don't want to say adamantium, but is it adamantium? It's vibranium, isn't it? Vibranium. Adamantium is Wolverine. Yeah. So it's it's made of vibranium. So when you hit Abyss in the face, it actually builds up energy and allows them to hit people harder. <laughs> That's canon. <laughs> We're making up all the Abyss canon. We're going to be able to write one of those in canon books like a bit like a cane had the true story of abyss yeah right, earlier in this show we did also get a gathering versus red shirts match gathering one after denaro rolled up northcott it was a decent little match i liked um i like seeing the gathering actually work well as a team now mm. and like they've got some chemistry the red shirts aren't good but northcott did this real cool pump handle like overhead throw a couple times this month and it was cool the red shirts aren't good, but Northcutt has been a sentence I've said a million times. Yeah, because like he's not a good wrestler, but he does occasionally do cool power moves. So you're like, you know what? He's not awful. And I like his backstory of bouncing in the streets of New Orleans. Yes, he's, he is a martial artist who fights off people in the streets of New Orleans who get too rowdy. That's that, that's the perfect pro wrestling character. Yeah, if he wasn't the security man, he, he would be much better off. Yeah. But he is like, he's perfect in the role of six man tags where he can just pop in and do one of his cool power moves and pop out and he doesn't actually have to wrestle. Yeah, I don't mind the red shirts as wrestlers, to be honest. Because they've, they've either done that, they've done plunder with people who are good at plunder, or they've squashed nerds. Mm. And even, I know you preferred the Ryan Wilson era over the Joey Legend era, but Legend is a nice little wrestler, even if he's not particularly interesting. I like this version of Legend more than, like, rival to the stars. Mm. Weird. So yeah, Raven hits Abyss in the face. Again, right in the face. Horrifying looking thing. Made a, just a sadistic noise. Right in the face with a steel chair. And then he made a challenge next week for a steel cage match. Ooh. Then Don, Don Callis later accepted the challenge. There's a note about Don Callis. <laughs> Wrestlers are mockingly referring to Don Callis as Butthead because of his resemblance to the character from Beavis and Butthead. That's rude. You know what though? I see it. A little bit. He's He is a man who has aged gracefully. Yeah, he doesn't look like Butthead anymore. So people can't call him Butthead in 2022. He looks nothing like Butthead now. He looks like a suave older gentleman now. Mm. He's like, I'll never be called Butthead again. Do you, is Callis like signed to AEW? I have no idea. That's an interesting... Because like he kind of d disappeared for a while after the Impact stuff. And then like he's back though. When, like I assume he'll be back when Kenny's back. But Kenny will probably be coming back as a baby face. So Don with them. I Maybe Don brings in someone else. Maybe Don Don is like Jay White's guy. That would be an interesting choice. Mm, interesting. So, like, well, because like I just think it makes sense like to continue the theme of Jay White being the guy who like replaces Kenny. Mm. Uh, Callis is said to be taking these butthead comments in his stride. Although Callis had to, uh, lo a lot of locker room heat during his run in with WWE, he was le well liked in ECW and is also popular in the TNA locker room. Hey, Don Callis, you're also popular with me. So yes, Don Callis accepts that six-man tag team challenge for the next week, which is our main event of NWA TNA Fairview number 67, December 7th. The Gathering and Raven face the Red Shirts and Abyss inside a steel cage. Earlier in the show, there is an interview with The Gathering and CM Punk where Punk says that he and Julio are there to make sure Raven gets what he deserves. <laughs> now, in the context of that promo, it, of course, is to suggest, because if Raven wins this match, he will face Jeff Jarrett for the NWA title on the January 7th pay-per-view. So in the context of that promo, it's the world title shot he deserves, of course, Liam. But perhaps he has an alternative meaning. I like to imagine that Raven's so, like, narcissistic that he's like, yeah, I, I will get what I deserve. And he didn't go, huh? Wait, what? <laughs> You're not going to betray me, are you? Nah, that'd be silly. Punk, they're so devoted. 
there was a moment in this promo where Raven lost the thread of his promo. <laughs> he started a line and then shifted to another. And then you just see Punk behind him start corpsing. And he's like starts chuckling to himself and he's clearly trying to hold it in. Yeah, for like a minute. He gets it right back towards the end. He just gets it in time. Yeah. Good. But like, you gotta remember, like Punk's been working with this dude for a year <laughs> in two companies. Like they probably don't have enough rapport now. Yeah, because when Raven does the quote the Raven Nevermore, Punk also mouths along to the Nevermore. Nevermore. Because they're devoted, but also, nevermore will they team with them. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. So yes, main event, steel cage match, Abyss and the Red Shirts defeat Raven and the Gathering after CM Punk and Julio De Niro turn on Raven, <gasps> hit him with a concerto, and drape Abyss over Raven. The Gathering have exploded. I mean, I never thought this would happen. There was no foreshadowing here. To be fair, like the, it, this is one of those where it does make perfect sense that they like they're thoroughly devoted to Raven. They loved him. They wanted to do everything for him. But Raven spurned that love unless it was convenient to him. So like yeah. they're perfectly in the will and their rights to turn on Raven. Be- hey, Raven's in the wrong here. You just wanted to use us when it was convenient to fight Abyss and the Red Shirts. You didn't care about us. You don't want, want to be our friends. And if you want to bring it right back. He was also physically and mentally abusing them. Yeah, he shoved bleach down Alexis Lurie's throat. And, like, sent them to the wolves multiple times to get beat up instead of him. Yeah, so it does make a lot of sense. The one thing you could criticize is that it was the classic, they worked a full steel cage match and then turned on Raven. Which I only accept in Dragon Gate. (laughs) Which, like, it does make some degree of sense. Because the Gathering aren't joining Jarrett's stable. There will be another development of this in January. So it's not like they're they're joining the other side. They're still at odds with the other side. But still, it would make a lot more sense to just hit Raven with a chair at the start of the match and not do a bloody violent cage match. Yeah. It, the, like, this match isn't great, but Punk does an elbow drop off a cage? Which, like, he lands, like, weirdly vertically. Yeah, it's very strange, because they do a double stack of a table, they put Abyss on top, and he does an elbow drop off the cage through two tables, which is a cool-looking spot, to be fair. Yeah, I'm always a fan of the double stack tables. Is that Punk's only off-the-cage moment of his career? I'd have to go back and watch the Raven ones. Yeah, I don't know the Ring of Honor, his Ring of Honor stuff to know whether or not he has done moves off of cages. I'm pretty sure he hasn't in WWE. I think he did in Ring of Honor. So yeah, elbow drop off the cage, two, two tables, it's pretty cool. But the match is so, like, utterly chaotic that while he is doing that, Jarrett and Styles are brawling on the ramp, and Sting comes out right after he does it. <laughs> so it's just utter chaos. Which I kind of don't mind if you're doing, like, a... This is meant to be a chaotic match, you know? Yeah, it works. I think that just the one thing is it maybe doesn't give Punk the, the emphasis he deserves for a dude that just did an elbow drop off a cage. Yeah, fair enough. It's like, it literally cuts away to Sting as as he lands. Like, Sting walks out immediately after. But yeah, that's the, the big turn, the big swerve. The Gathering have turned on Raven, they're going out on their own, and that's our, our feud heading into January. The, the thing that takes Raven once again away from the path of challenging Jeff Jarrett for the world title. From his destiny. Yes, he's been, his destiny is once again derailed Liam as the Gathering has betrayed him. He has to go beat his kids. <laughs> Excuse me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this wasn't a Vince Russo thing. Mm. His metaphorical kids. But with literal beatings. Unlike with Vince Russo, where it was his literal kids, but metaphorical beatings. Yeah, of course. It's an important distinction. Hmm. 